The third option, so we've got containerization. So um, mainly speaking around Azure Kubernetes service is what we use um, for our customers, mostly with the containerization. Um, uh, similar concepts for other containerization, so Docker or um, you know other equivalents within other providers, but we'll just concentrate on Azure Kubernetes for today. Um, so first of all, um, you can see application gateway there. It's uh, slightly different to the application gateway or it's slightly different to how we deploy it for web apps and virtual machines, but a uh, very similar concept still. So it's they're known as ingress controllers within Azure Kubernetes. Um, but basically they provide HTTPS decryption. So instead of sending traffic directly to pods that sit that are running your applications that sit within the Kubernetes cluster, what we can do is we can send it to the ingress controller, which will have certificates on and that can decrypt the traffic before sending it to, to your backend applications. Um, you know, re really good way. It's, it can also be used for path based routing. So if you've got, you know, a website that's running on a different path, you can send it to the app gateway and then that'll send it to different pods. But we'll, um, you know, it's a little bit off topic for this webinar, but it can be used for many different things, not just for the security aspects for it. Um, next one I've got is uh, Kubernetes secrets. So um, please use secrets where you can when using um, Azure Kubernetes, so storing your data, whether that's um, connection strings, whether it's passwords to connect to things, you know, please keep them in secrets and then inject them into the pods. Um, we see quite a lot of people just leaving connection strings in the YAML files that are used for the deployment. Um, and whilst this will work, it does mean that if anyone gets hold of your YAML files, then they've got you know your secrets they've got all of your uh, passwords and connection strings for them to connect to your databases or applications um, so please where you can use um, use kubernetes secrets but you can also um, integrate key vault into kubernetes for your secret management so key vault um, you may be aware is widely used in azure for secrets and you know encryption um, so you can inject that both uh, both into the kubernetes cluster as well to use so um, it requires a, a CSI driver, but there's, there's plenty of documentation on that on, online with how you can incorporate it, that into Kubernetes. But then you can have a central secret management system um, that you can uh, you can keep all your secrets in. Um, so for the container registry side of things, um, you know, consider encrypting that container registry with Microsoft managed keys, at least um, if you've got your own, you know, bring your own key, you can do that as well. Um, then keys can be stored in a key vault in Azure and then you can configure things like managed service identities so that only the key, uh, only the container registry, sorry, can hook into that key vault to get the, uh, the key to and encrypt any images or anything like that. Um, and also if you use the premium tier of the, of the Azure container registry, um, you can take advantage of the firewalls and container registry. So, you know, you can control who can and who um, who can pull, sorry, and who can push images to the container registry. Um, if you don't configure that, then anyone can pull and push, especially if they've got permissions or they if they've got access to the master username and password that, that the container registry provides. Um, and just another mention around private link, it's in preview for container registry, but hopefully in the future it will be um, you know, generally available. Um, so then you can take advantage of having that container registry on the internal network as opposed to a public endpoint. Um, moving on to network policies for your pods within Kubernetes. So very similar functionality to network security groups for virtual machines. That's how you can kind of think of it. So instead of network security groups isolating subnets um, or even virtual machines from each other, network policies can segregate pods within that Kubernetes cluster. So you set up policies to make sure that certain applications can't speak to other certain applications. If you, you know, if you've got data that can't um, intermingle with each other, um, it's worth men mentioning by default any pods in that Kubernetes cluster, even across namespaces, will be able to speak with each other. So, you know, if you do need that isolation, then you will need to deploy extra policies to put that in place. It's it's not just out of the box that they're segregated from each other. Um, it's obviously up to your workloads whether you need to segregate them or not, but it's a, it's a good feature to be there. And then just before obviously we, we go on to Security Center as a whole, um, you know, Security Center specifically for Kubernetes and container registries um, that will give you recommendations to make that environment safer. So 
you know, recently they're, they've, they've been adding more compatibility between Security Center and Azure Kubernetes. So, you know, it will give you recommendations such as encrypting your container registry with uh, with managed keys as opposed to just leaving it unencrypted. Um, and there's, there's various other um, recommendations that it will give you, you know, if things are on the internet that they shouldn't be and things like that, it will um, it will provide them recommendations for you so you can keep on top of it.